So what about next year's Arts Council grant? Are they going to get the extra 30 million? Oh, my dear Simon, I couldn't disclose the figure in advance. Least of all to the managing director of the National Theatre. Huh? Have some of these. <laughs> Only six? You're not serious. I'm afraid that's the new diet. Six breadsticks is the absolute maximum. Is that gross breadsticks or net breadsticks? <laughs> net breadsticks. So what are we going to get to the National? Only one. <laughs> That's disastrous. How can they expect us to manage on one and a half million pounds? I don't know where you got that figure from. <laughs> You've got to help me. What can I do? You mean, if the grant figure, which of course we do not yet know, were to be not merely less than you told the press was the absolute minimum to stave off disaster, but lower even than the real minimum required to stave off disaster? Yes. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you, even though I'm on the board. Let me be quite clear about this, Simon. I am here to represent the Prime Minister's interest. Now, there are certain things which would gravely upset him. I must urge you on his behalf not to contemplate them. Good. What are they? <laughs> well, you'll be making the speech introducing him at the um, awards dinner. It would be a courtesy to send a draft to number 10 in advance. For approval? Well, let's say for information. Now, the Prime Minister is extremely anxious that the speech should not refer to the modesty of the grant increase. There are certain words that he would like you to avoid. Miserly, <laughs> Philistine, <laughs> barbarism, <laughs> skinflint, <laughs> killjoy. <laughs> he would also like you to avoid all reference to how much more other countries spend on the arts. What are the figures? There you are. To make sure you don't mention them by mistake. It certainly won't mention them by mistake. And thirdly, and most important of all, he wants absolutely no comparison between the extra money your theatre needs and certain sums that the government spent last year on certain projects. Such as? Well, let's say the figure were to be four million, uh, purely as an example, of course. Now, the Prime Minister earnestly hopes that your speech will not refer to the fact that the government spent five million on radar equipment for a fighter plane that had already been scrapped, <laughs> or that the Department of Energy had been able to afford to stockpile a thousand years' supply of filing tabs, <laughs> or that another department had stocked up with a million tins of vim, <laughs> etc., etc., etc. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was delicious. Yes. He never even goes to the theatre, does he? Well, he can't, really. He's frightened of giving the cartoonist and gossip columnist too much ammunition. You see, he couldn't go to a month in the country for fear of starting rumours about a general election, and he couldn't go to your marvellous production of The Rivals because there have been so many cabinet ministers after his job, and he couldn't go to the school for scandal. Well and not after the education secretary had been found in bed with that married primary school headmistress. Uh, Prime Minister, yes. uh, do forgive me, gentlemen. You remember Simon Monk, oh, don't Mr. you? Monk, yes. This is very bad news about the grant, Prime Minister. Surely not, it's gone up. Nothing like enough. Well, enough for it to be unnecessary for you to... Uh... I'm afraid not. Oh. Oh, because I was hoping to do something really significant next year. You remember you were saying that you had to spend nearly half your grant on the upkeep of the buildings? Yes. Well, I have a plan that should relieve you of that. Really? Oh, that would be marvellous. Yeah, wouldn't it? And it'd make the National Theatre really national, too. What do you mean? I'm thinking of selling the National Theatre. <laughs> selling it? I knew you'd be pleased. <laughs> that way we can save three millions on upkeep. Prime Minister, this is impossible. No, it's quite easy, actually. We've had a terrific offer for the site. But the National Theatre must have a base. And so it will. You could have inexpensive offices in Brixton or Toxteth. <laughs> Middlesbrough. 
What about the what about the theatres? What about the workshops? And then you could hire them like any other company. Put on your productions in the West End or the Old Vic or the provincial theatres. Become strolling players again instead of civil servants. <laughs> be disastrous. Oh, surely not. Didn't you say that the theatre was about plays and actors, not bricks and mortar? Oh yes, yes, but that was uh, that was look. The National Theatre must have a home. And so it will. Lots of homes. <laughs> All the subsidised theatres would be called National Theatres. They'd be the National Theatre at Glasgow, the National Theatre at Sheffield, the National Theatre at Bristol and so on. And that three million could help them all. You'd just be the London branch of the National Theatre. <laughs> I should think that would be very popular with the whole profession. Barbarism. What, spending money on actors instead of building? Yes. Well, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Anyway, it's just one of my options. I may decide against it, or I may not. I could outline it in my speech, if necessary. <laughs> it all depends. On... Oh, changing the subject, have you decided what you're going to say in your speech yet? Yes. <laughs> oh, uh, well, uh, not uh, finally. Because I wondered if those jokes about government waste were really very funny. Of course, it's your decision. I'm sure you understand me. <laughs> Mr. Prime Minister, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, three silence for Simon Monk, Esquire, the managing director of the National Theatre. Mr. Prime Minister, my lords, Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you will have read this morning of the grant for the Arts Council and the National Theatre. I know many of us are uh, disappointed by the amount. <laughs> of course, we would have all liked it to have been larger, but apparently this is a time of national stringency and we must think in terms of national needs. There are many calls on the public purse. Education, inner cities, health, kidney machines. <laughs> I think we should be glad that any increase at all has been possible and grateful to our guest of honour whose, whose personal intervention made even this small breadstick possible. Uh, increase. <laughs> Gentlemen, to our guest of honour, the patron of the arts, the Prime Minister. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, the toast is... Excellent speech, don't you think, Humphrey? The patron of the arts, the Prime Minister! Yes, Prime Minister. <laughs>